The Wake Up Call with Cold Omaha on Minnesota's Sports Radio, 105 The Ticket. Half hour left on the wake up call. My name's Sam Ekstrom. Tom Schreier absent today. He'll be back next Sunday. Again, check out the Cold Omaha podcast on the wake up call show page. We're now recording twice a week, about a 30 to 45 minute look into sports and uh, the work we're doing at Cold Omaha, which you can read at 105theticket.com. Master Tesfatsi in studio. Is this you picking the jams right here? Are you picking yeah. all these jams right now? Yeah. Oh, you jamming right now. You, you. I appreciate that. You know, coming from a musical connoisseur like you, that actually does mean a lot. I'm not. A, I'm. I'm just a hip hop connoisseur. I, I don't know if I'd call myself a musical one, but if, if ah, you, we jamming right now. Follow at Master Strib, and not only will you get a lot of great Vikings insight, but a lot of good song suggestions too. A, a lot of Kanye West. As, as it was uh, this morning. Oh, I, I, I'm finding myself... To That's be, how you got pumped up for the wake-up call. Of course, man. I was watching uh, Burning Mac comedy and, and Kanye West, uh, listening to Kanye West music. That's, that's how we do it. Terrific. That, that's how you spend the Sunday morning. Yeah. All right. We're going to do Vikings over-under. I'm going to throw a million numbers at you. I want you to go over-under, all right? It's going right. to be fast action. This is to appease... Fast action? Yeah. All right, let's go. Come on. It doesn't have to be too fast. All right, well, come on. But we're going... Chip, Chip Kelly fast here, or what are we talking about? Uh, no. No, we're, we're talking like um, the seven seconds or less Suns. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. 4,000 passing yards for Teddy Bridgewater, over, under. And quick note, that would have been 12th in the NFL last year between Tannehill and Flacco. 4,000 passing yards. Under. They're going to run the ball a lot. They have Adrian Peterson. Okay. 1,450 yards on the ground for Adrian Peterson. That was his yearly average for the first seven years of his career. Over if he stays healthy. Really? Yeah. Over 1,450. He's, so that would have been second behind Murray last year. He's going off this year. Over. We might need to touch on that again after uh, we finish our fast action lines. 12 sacks for the team's sack leader. That's what Everson Griffin had last year. 12? Over under 12. Uh... I'd say under. The Zimmer's teams do like to spread the wealth. Yeah, and, 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 and plus, it, it's he's so run conscious. Like this defense is so run conscious, and that's the mentality that the, the defensive ends have to have is to focus on the run. That these usually his teams don't have like a guy who just goes off on sacks. Who is going to be the sack leader? Do you think it'll be Griffin? Okay, yeah, it'll be Griffin. I don't know if he'll I get agree. twelve, but I mean he'll probably get what ten, eleven. But, it, I mean, there's more to it than just sacks for him. I, and so I wouldn't right. want to say that's a down year for him not reaching 12 sacks. I would say the more important number at the end of the year is to look at team sacks versus individual sacks for anybody. Because the team, you're going to get, you know, three from linebacker A, four from linebacker B. Your your but defensive tackles are going to get in the action, too. You, you also got to look at pressures and hurries. I mean, those are just as effective as, as a sack. And so, can lead to interceptions and, as well. And quarterback hits, yeah. Right. Over under 0.5 starts for Robert Blanton. Basically, whether over. or not... Oh, over, he, yeah. Over. Is he going to be the week one starter? Uh, We'll see what Exum does, but uh, at this point, yeah, I see him being the week one starter. Antoine Exum, that is. You think Anthony Harris has a chance? Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't really see too much of him uh, during mini camp and OTAs. It's, yeah, it's, he's it's hard a, to judge those guys. I mean, he's like, had a thing. Yeah, it's hard to judge those guys when they don't have uh, pads on either. I'm just not convinced that Blanton's the answer. He was pretty good against the run, not great against the pass last year. Seemed to be a little behind the play at times, but who am I to judge? I'm not an NFL coach. Two point five rookie starters. 2.5. 2.5 rookie starters. I'd say we'll the candidates would be Clemmings, Clemens. Waynes, Kendricks. It'll be either. I mean, we'll see what happens with Thompson and if, if someone else, one of the rookies. But, yeah, I, I see one of the rookies starting on the offensive line, Kendricks. And uh, I'm trying to scam through some other ones. Um, so they just have to start week one? Is that what's the... Yeah. Um, Penciled in week one. So you're talking I, I'd Newman, say, or, okay. Newman or Waynes. I'd say under, under those two. I'd, okay, I'm going to stick with uh, with Kendricks and either you know the Clemmings, Thompson, and whoever it, the bunch is that starts at at uh, offensive line. So you like Newman at corner? At this point, yeah. Okay, I agree. It seemed to me like they were pushing Wayne's 
more on special teams and in the nickel toward the end of towards the end of mini camp too. And that's but, I mean what it, it, we'll see how it how it develops in training camp, but there's. There's not a rush to, to, to start Waynes already. I mean, it's so hard for a cornerback to just adapt to how many good NFL wide receivers there are in this league, and all of a sudden, things will click. I mean, he's going to go through a huge learning process and a learning curve, um, especially at that position. So I, I don't, I don't see a reason to rush into him unless he just everything's just clicking and, and it's just he's just playing outstanding in training camp. Yeah, and to think back to Xavier Rhodes too, who was probably less heralded than Waynes. Rhodes started Week One, but then they pulled him off and they they let him sit for a while until he learn the ropes a little bit more so in this era in sports we want our rookies to play right away we can't always expect that 1.5 kick slash punt return touchdowns 1.5 yeah um i think they had none last year uh i'll say over cordero returning kicks you think yeah i i I, I, with with patterson returning kicks i think i think he'll he had a he had a decent year last year on special teams, and I, th- I think he'll be fine. And whoever it is that it's punting, whether it's Cheryl's or you know, Stephon Diggs, whoever it might be, three point five tight ends on the opening day roster. Under, yeah, they'll have three. Who gets cut? Uh, it'll either be uh, you know, Ford or Ellison. Yeah, Ford or Ellison, and. Uh, it just depends on what they value more. Do they value a pass catching tight end more? Or do they value a run blocking tight end? And I mean, it, it's none of those guys are, are as you know are complete tight ends like Michael Pruitt is and, and Kyle Rudolph. So I'd say three. Maybe this is a hot take, but I could see them keeping four. Oh, Tom's, and, Tom's and, telling me about this idea and turning <laughs> turning Ellison into more of a fullback and not keeping a true fullback on the roster because they've they've worked Ellison at both positions. And Ellison would be a good fullback. He would be. Yeah. Um, he's a great, he's a fantastic blocker, an outstanding blocker. But, uh, yeah, Tom, Tom told me about this uh, concept that you had, this hot take that you had. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. I, All right. I, I, I'm going to say three for now, so under. You want to hear my other hot take? This is off. Oh, man, off, just hot. We got off, off t- my takes sheet. hotter than fish grease right now. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> I don't think that there's going to be, well, I got to back off of this. You know what? No, gonna, no, 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 you, no. You already started, man. No, Go I, ahead. Come on. Well, I rethought it just in the moment, and I don't like it anymore. Nah, you can't strip teases like that, man. We need to know what's going on. Okay. For a time, but I see, I don't think it's going to come true. For a time, I thought there weren't going to be any Minnesota natives on the roster. No Cheryl's, no Thielen. But that's, that's, Thielen might get in at the sixth receiver spot because he's he's a valuable backup, and he's a good special teamer. And he could get on his special team. I don't think that's – I mean, that's that's highly possible. That it really is. Um, that's good to hear you say that. Because they hardly use, you know, four wide receivers as it is on this offense. So, I mean, you have to justify somehow keeping Thielen. I mean, five wide receivers already is more than enough in this offense. Mm-hmm. Can you justify keeping Thielen on special teams? That I mean, that's going to be one of those decisions they're going to have to figure out, uh, you know, as one of the final cuts. 2.5 divisional victories for the Vikings out of six possible. They had one last year. Oh, that's over. Yeah, that's over. They'll, 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 uh, at least 500 in the division. Yeah, they'll, 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 and I'll, they'll, I can, just, they'll split with the Packers. So what I'm gaining here is from our conversations thus far, you like the Vikings this year. Yeah. You yeah. think they're going to be a, a contender? They have a quality, quality roster. They have a lot of young talent. Uh, and a lot of it's dependent on the coaching staff, and, and they have a lot of coaches on the team that are, you know, really good teachers, as we've seen from last year, just seeing the jump that a lot of players made uh, so early in their careers already. Over, under, zero in the take-give. In the what? In the take-give, in the turnover differential. Zero is over, under? So, yeah. Um, they were minus one last year. I'd say Over. Uh, it, it'll that, those those things are always tough to read, but I, I'd say over on that. Last one. Or or after November twenty second, when we cover our first below freezing game at TCF Bank. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with under. It's, it's so yeah. it's gonna be November eighth, I think, against. Is it Oakland? I'm not sure. Oh. Last oh, no, o- Oakland games in, uh, on the road. That's on the road. Yeah, but the, I mean, the Christian Ponder. Uh, inevitable. Oh yeah, when somehow start. the car is going to be injured, that thumb's just going to aggravate him again, and you know Christian Ponder's going to start, and, and then everyone will just play out the revenge game uh, storyline and narrative. I, I should probably just go ahead and write my story right now, or write a blog right now about mm-hmm. it. I mean, it's it seems like almost the inevitable. Get on it. Somehow Ponder's going to end up starting that game. One more segment with Master Tesfatsian. That was a good over under, good fast action. I think we covered a lot of ground. 
you can place all your bets now in Vegas. Please don't. We'll go through the NFC North standings potentially after the break.